This is The Basketball Show with Shane the Hammer Heel and Steve Mr. Magic Carpino. Brought to you by Unibet, TCL Plex, and News Corp. What they gonna say next? Hello and welcome to The Basketball Show, or should I say the playoff edition of The Basketball Show. But first, let's thank our sponsors, Unibet. TCL, a brand new name in that, and News Corp Australia. As always, on the desk is my man Shane the Hammer Heel, and this is a cause for celebration for the show. We're cracking big numbers. Well, it's been an unbelievable week, and uh, over 90,000 views, video views, on our channels and social media. So, absolutely unbelievable from where we started uh, last year, and it's all thanks to the people that are watching and sharing it. And uh, without Unibet and TCL and obviously being here at uh, News Corp, it's uh, been exceptional. And we're going for 100,000 this week, so share, please. Oh, that's big news. And also big news, the young Australians coming up, opting to play. Well, no, let's just talk about Josh Giddy. Warwick Giddy's good. son, he can who? How good. Well, before we go to that, yeah. th we're talking about celebrations of this sort. How many people? Celebrations from our producer, who's a Kiwi, that they got their <laughs> first win in 11 years. Can you believe it? <laughs> Logan, he's just, you know, tickle pink. But uh, anyway, it doesn't happen. It'll be another 11 years before it happens again. And uh, Josh Giddy, because we sent all these young kids, don't worry about that, but he's 17 years of age, son of King Wazza. He hit two threes. Wazza didn't hit a three for his entire <laughs> career. Not one three. He's hit two. He played 13 minutes, 11 points, six assists, and a couple of uh, rebounds as well. Plays with such poise, and we got the exclusive that he's playing in the NBL. All right. Well, you spoke with him on Fox Sports. Let's check that out entire career so you did well but there's talk that you may decide to play in the NBL rather than go the college route. Yeah so I have decided I'm going to stay here playing the NBL and I'll yeah, go rid of um, the college option. Fantastic. <laughs> well, what made you um, come to that conclusion? Yeah I just um, kind of staying home, get to be with my family and um, the big thing for me was playing, in, playing against men so it could kind of develop me for the, for the long term. Um, and what a sign that is for the NBL that a young kid like that that's been recruited all over the place from US colleges and decides to put his future in the NBL's pathway and uh, just sends, sends uh, a great message, I reckon. What do you think was a factor? You know, he's young, you know, he has to wait to go to college, he can't go in the draft in the NBA. What are some of the things that well, you think Well, when I spoke to him, he said that the opportunity of playing against pros, playing against men right now, and, and we've got so many guys that are capable of playing in the NBA, and we've been able to see what LaMelo Ball's done. An American coming here using our league as a pathway to get to the NBA, why wouldn't he do this? I think it's a great decision. Yeah, great decision. Setting the way, the pathway to the Elite Championship and and the big money. This is the starting five brought to you by TCL Plex smartphones. Well, starting five, we've got to jam a lot of topics. We had to be very selective in this one because we got so a much. lot of big ones. Mike Kelly getting a two year extension. Well, I think he took up the option. Mm -hmm. If you're the club, though, you'd say, How about we make it five? <laughs> Let's get you done, locked away, far north Queensland for five years because I think we all agree he's done such a good job this year. Pressure's on now. Yeah, are they just making up the numbers or can they legitimately have a chance of knocking off the big dogs? We'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, a little bit later. He's got that formula. He's got guys on a short leash, a short rotation, really playing some good basketball. Perro Cameron's coaching debut for the Tall Blacks. Big Perro. You play with Perro, right? Big Pete did a great job. And I thought he's... Coaching in-game was exceptional. He looked at what the Boomers were doing, and then he was able to put his best players in a position to be able to capitalise on that. Uh, really good effort. They had a little bit more experience, obviously, and, and togetherness than what the Boomers did, but I thought he did a terrific job, and, uh, and his contribution, no doubt, had a big influence on the game. Now, speaking of international basketball, the FIBA break, you know, who will that benefit? Just for example, say the Sydney Kings with the coach Will Weaver, will that disrupt his preparation? Well... There's no doubt it doesn't help the Sydney Kings that Will Weaver was away. Still enough time for them, three or four days, to get ready for their first game. I thought the big winners were probably the Perth Wildcats. I thought with Damian Martin, another week or two for him to be able to get ready after missing a lot of games with his injury. And White, who has been out of form, but looks like he's injured as well. So I think it helps them. Uh, I think it hurts the Melbourne momentum. They just started to come good, got a couple of big wins, all ready to go. Now they've got to be able to, to wait. Um, so I don't think it uh, necessarily helps them. And Cairns, 
they probably have to. They have two weeks to lick their wounds and a chance to be able to regather themselves before they take on the big dogs. All right, big news there, and also big news in Adelaide. The uh, after-season function, which is a big deal in Adelaide for the 36ers, Joey Wright, a no-show, didn't go. I mean, I know there's all kind of turmoil going in that situation, the relationship wow. with the players and the coach and the owner, whole lot going on right there. Has the line in the sand been drawn? Gloves off, baby. <laughs> it's on in Adelaide, no doubt about that. And, uh, you know, word coming through that that situation this year was pretty toxic. It was, yeah, not good. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there. But that's a bit of a haymaker from Joey. If he didn't, if the reports are right and he didn't show up to the end of year awards, wow. Yeah, that's a tough one. They wouldn't be happy with the ownership with that. Oh, uh, no. I don't know what to say with that one. I'll just move on to the next topic. How about the Sydney Kings? They're loaded. They've got a whole lot of depth. Kevin Lish coming back into the lineup. Craig Moeller is supposed to come back for the postseason. What does that do to the rhythm of the team that's been playing well? Well, it's going to be really difficult for Will Weaver and his rotations here. And you know that it looks like he does it, you know, he has a system in place that he subs regardless of what's going on and who's playing well and who's not and matchups and everything else. He's subbing to a T. So then getting Lish, who's been back for a few weeks, Moller came back and played some minutes, how he gets them into the rotation and what that looks like. And then how does that sacrifice some of their better players that might not get a rhythm? That's going to be intriguing to see how they go. They've got more depth than any other team, but I'm not, it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Well, for more insight to the Sydney Kings, Joe Healy. Joe in the know caught up with Sean Bruce. All right, I've got Sean with me. Sean, I guess I'll start by asking, what does it feel like to have gone an entire season on top of the ladder? It's a pretty amazing achievement. Yeah, it's been cool, obviously. A lot of winning, so um, yeah, your life's made a lot easier that way. But um, yeah, it's been great to be a part of and um, yeah, something we're uh, happy about but excited about the next few weeks and finals starting. Will's shown a lot of trust in you guys, particularly coming off the bench. You're playing more minutes than any other bench team in the league. What does it feel like to have somebody who believes in you like that and just lets you go out there and do your thing? Yeah, it's, um, it's unbelievable. Probably something I haven't had in my career. And um, along with the rest of the guys, we just love playing with one another. And um, we feel like depth is one of our strengths. And obviously, Will kind of acknowledges that and tries to rotate bodies and we try to wear teams down over the 40 minutes and that's kind of work for us. You picked up the coaches award the other night at the Kings Awards. What does that mean to you and how does that compare to anything else that you've perhaps received in your career so far? Yeah, it means a lot. Um, a few of the guys giving me some stick saying I've been sucking up or something like that, but um, no, nah, it means a lot. They're there with us every day and um, yeah, I guess the acknowledgement from them that I'm doing my job's a big thing and um, gives me a lot of confidence. Is there anybody from the club who perhaps was here before you arrived at the Kings that has been a bit of a mentor or taking you under their wing at all? Yeah, I mean, all our older guys are probably guys I've looked up to before. I mean, Bogues, um, Newells and Kicks, um, they played on some AIS teams with my older brother and actually had posters of them growing up on my wall of their AIS team. So guys I've looked up to, but... Um, guys I've learned a lot from just in this last season but across their whole careers. Let's focus on the semi-final matchup, Melbourne United. What's been the focus for you guys in training in terms of particularly playing against them leading up to this game? Yeah, well they've obviously played some really good basketball winning those last three games to get into the playoffs and um, yeah, they've got a lot of scoring power so obviously it's a team that likes to score a lot and we obviously rely on our defence so I guess yeah, making life tough for their, a lot of their scorers and just, yeah, picking our poison down the other end and going about how we have and moving the ball and just trying to involve everybody and stick to our strengths. And from a Melbourne point of view, where do you see their biggest strength and, and their biggest threat to you guys? Yeah, well, Chris is obviously playing really well shooting the ball and I think the last few weeks they've found their roles a little bit more with Mello coming off the bench and then he's coming in and playing with a lot of confidence as well. So I think a lot of what they run go through those two guys. So just finding a way to slow them down and making life tough for them.
Great to see Joe Healy out on the road doing those interviews for the basketball show, whether she's in the studio or on the road, she does a great job. Speaking of a great job, this is the playoff edition of the basketball show, and you can't have a playoff edition without having somebody from the Perth Wildcats, or at least I should say, WA. Welcome to the show, Nick Lakovich. Great, to be, yeah. great to be here for the playoff edition and looking forward to... Uh, What's going to be an epic matchup between four elite teams? Okay, before we go to our courtside correspondents, what about the mentality of the Perth Wildcats? We don't do anything until the entire season's over and the championship has been decided. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is a program that uh, has been embedded with leadership and culture. They don't celebrate anything until the season has finished and is finalized. And generally, it's about celebrating the awards and also the biggest award, which is a championship. Well, well, according to Latko and everybody in WA, they are the center, the epicenter for basketball <laughs> in Australia. But Paula Kennedy would probably disagree with that. And somehow the Melbourne team snuck into the playoffs. Yeah, well, Dean Vickerman has pulled another rabbit out of his coaching hat. He did it four years ago in New Zealand. He took the slumping breakers into the playoffs and all the way to the grand final. He's managed to sneak United in in the last week of the postseason. But now to get to the grand final, they have got to beat the Kings in the semis. And Sydney have beaten them convincingly in their past three meetings. They outscored them by 30 from the three-point line and by 30 on points in the paint in those three games. So Melbourne's got to change something defensively. Challenge for them is their late season resurgence came on the back of aggressive defense, really good hard shows, proactive rotations. They were forcing a lot of turnovers and then running the other way. Thing is, when Sydney get you in any sort of rotation, they go straight to the rim, they get points, they get free throws, or they kick it out to their three-point shooters. So can Melbourne be as aggressive while maintaining rim protection and are their rotations good enough to close out the three-point shooters or are they going to have to pick their poison? It's a tough challenge, but who would write off Dean Vickerman after his brief but outstanding history as an NBL coach? Well, all good points. They, they are so dangerous, Melbourne, because I think Sydney's got all the pressure on them. The expectation to lead from round one to the end of the season is unheard of. It hasn't been done. Um, people have sort of written Melbourne off. They've snuck in, and that makes them so dangerous with how potent they are, and the Sydney Kings have to make their threes. They shoot so many threes, which again puts pressure on them being able to make it from the perimeter. Oh, yeah, super dangerous. And everyone was talking about how dangerous Cairns have been because they've been playing some great basketball. But everybody knew all that talent, if they got it going in the same direction and played some defense, they're going to be super dangerous if they got in the playoffs. Well, that's one uh, of the series. The other series is your series. So let's throw to you. Who is going to be the critical matchup? I think I know the answer. Well, in boxing, Shane and Steve, they say styles make great fights. And by that token, you can imagine that the matchup between the Taipans and the Wildcats is going to be great entertainment. You, entertainment. You're talking about two great leaders in Cotton and Machado. And let's throw over to Cotton right now. The fact that he's a reigning MVP an absolute great shot maker for the Perth Wildcats, and he loves to stand up in big moments, particularly in the postseason. A gifted scorer, and what you want to watch through the course of this series is his ability to create for himself and his teammates, in particular in on-board pick and rolls where he specializes in, and then watch late clock situations in isolation, how he's able to elevate, finish at the rim, mid-range, or from deep, and then most importantly, get himself to the free throw line. And now you go over to a guy like Machado, an elite playmaker, and he has helped drive the standard and elevate that club from last to third. A unique player. Why? Because he's promoted the pass. He's a selfless player that's instilled belief amongst the player group and the franchise. And this is the reason I think it's going to be the matchup of the semifinals. Oof. Man, I tell wow. you what, that is a tough you're one. Committed, man. Hey, you're who's committed. That, who's that? I think Derek, you might well throw the Derek. No, well, hold on, hold on. Oh, Let's yeah. not go to Derek yeah, okay. yet because <laughs> I think you're right. But I think the adjustments is going to take place is that Perth are going to try and shut down Machado like we saw in the last round. They have to face guard. Damian Martin, the best Absolutely. defender in the competition, has to get all over him, not even allow him to get catches. When he gives it up, then right in his grill and, and take him out of the game. It's harder to do that with Cotton because they have so much movement. They yeah. always get him going off pin downs and flares and everything else, and he works so well without the ball. 
know, this is a team that has a lot of confidence going to Perth and getting a win. Cans are fearless. They don't fear anybody. They've got that rotation of, of players, not a big number like so many teams use. They got those seven, eight guys that are super confident. They're all shot makers. They can all make plays. And they're going into a place where there's super atmosphere. I don't know about you guys, but I love to silence a crowd. And that's mm. the type of team that they have. And Cairns did that early in the year. That's what catapulted their start of the season. They got a big win in RAC Arena. And a big part of that is the versatility that they have through their front court. The ability to switch out late clock, defend, show hard in on balls. And they're going to have, as you mentioned, Shane, to get the ball out of Cotton's hands. Deng, Oliver, these guys, they're capable of doing it. Well, let's check out what Derek Ruck has got to say about the series. Well, this should be a great series between the Perth Wildcats and Cairns Taipans. And I think there are a couple of big points that will play out throughout the course of this series. First, can Miles Plumley stay out of foul trouble? He's had some uh, problem adjusting to the NBL's unique style of officiating. If he spends extended minutes on the bench, Big favor to the Taipan. Secondly, Tariko White. He's been patchy this season, but we know what he's capable of in the playoffs. The Perth Wildcats need him to provide a scoring punch in this series against Cairns because the Cairns are loaded on the perimeter. They have very good players all over the floor. And the Wildcats, if they don't get White and Plumlee to make solid contributions and be impactful in the game, the Taipans are going to advance to the grand final. You can bank it. Guys, I look forward to this series. And look forward to hearing your thoughts on my opinions. Talk to you soon. It's time now for the Unibet Game Preview. Who's hot? Who's not? Well, you can see the excitement in, or you can hear the excitement in Derek Rucker's voice. He's Playoffs, just as excited baby. as all of us are. Great matchup in both of those series. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, well, let's get into game one. I mean, you're mm. closer than anyone because you're over there. You live it. You played for the Wildcats as well. Um, are they going into that game with any pressure? I don't think so. You know, I think the way that they're built and uh, they love this moment. Everything is built up to the postseason for these guys. So they're playoff hardened. They understand that they're confident in standing shoulder to shoulder with each other, knowing that they can depend on each other in the heat of the battle. The question mark over Cairns is they've yet to taste it with this group. Yes, they have talent, but will they be able to deliver? Most importantly, on the big stage in front of a raging red army in 14 or potentially 15,000 people. Well, the, the biggest question I've got is Tariko White, because if we didn't know what he did in last year's playoffs, mm -hmm. we would say, mate, he's limping towards the playoffs. He hasn't been good over the last couple of months, hasn't delivered, and he's a critical piece. I think he's the unknown in that team. We know what Cotton's going to give you. We know what Kay's going to give you. What can he bring to the table? Well, he's critical in being able to stand up, particularly when there's so much pressure on Cotton to be able to knock down those perimeter shots. It's got to be him. It's got to be Steindel that carry that load and release a little bit of pressure, particularly when the ball's out of Cotton's hands. And then the other one who's been an all-star, and he's obviously an all-NBL first team, is Nick Kay. His play, as you guys have mentioned for so long over the last month, has been critical in fast-tracking how well they're playing going into the playoffs. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm going for Perth in Game 1. I think they'll be too strong at home. But I'm going to flip back because the game's only two days later. It's on mm. Sunday. Um, I think that um, it'll be one all. I think the home teams will win both these games. Yeah, I agree with you. I agree with Shane exactly on that. I think this is going to go to a, a three-game series and it justifies two great teams with so many great matchups. And Cairns are deadly at home in their environment as well. So I couldn't agree more. Yeah, it's going to come down. I think it's going to be Perth, but it's going to be in three. I think the home court advantage is just going to be huge in this series. And that's why you work so hard in the regular season to try and, try and get that one done. Sunday is game two. And then if required, game three is Thursday, March 8th. So that's going to be a fantastic series. And, and, and I think this next series with the Sydney Kings and Melbourne United might not necessarily have the home court advantage of the other series. Um, and some would argue because Sydney have been pretty dominant at mm. home, but Melbourne traditionally have come into Sydney over the years and done really well. And they've got the potential. Both teams have probably got more potential, I think, to be able to, to win on the road. This is going to be an intriguing match, and I'll be interested to see how guys like Moller and Lish fit into that lineup of I've mentioned. Are they taking valuable minutes away from other guys that are in form? What can they contribute at the end of the season when they haven't really had a good builder? Yeah, you're right. I mean, Shane, when you look at that list, there's 11 deep that all contribute. And the last guy to that roster that they've got who's their leading rebounder, you know who it is? Xavier Cooks. Xavier Cooks. Yeah. Averaging six points, leads them in rebounds and block shots, 1.4 per game. 
So he's got a heavy bench that he's rotated, but also he's rotated during the regular season because this guy's been out injured. Now they're all back. And how does that style of play equate to playoff hardened basketball? The other thing for the Melbourne United is how do they deal with Casper Ware? I mean, he's averaging five three-point makes a game, shooting it at a high clip, and 28 points and five assists. I mean, he's... And he couldn't make against yeah. anyone else for oh, the yeah. season, shooting in the 20s. How about how he celebrates when he hits a bucket in front of their bench? <laughs> Right. He just lives to play against these guys. Who do you guys like in the series? I'm going to go with Sydney, but um, not with a whole lot of confidence. I really think that Melbourne are a sneaky chance. For me, I think that this series will be clean for Sydney in two. You can't underestimate the fact that they've led from start to finish on a 20-round season. Uh, Melbourne, uh, at times, have looked fragmented and haven't had an identity. How are guys like uh, Long and Trimble going to step up under the bright lights in the pressure? And are they going to play team-orientated basketball? The key here is McCarron and Barlow for me. If they can step up, play big roles, then they're a chance for it to go to three. Well, I think it's going to be Sydney as we roll right into the Unibet game previews. Game one that we're going to talk about is Sacramento at OKC. Who do you guys Who like? Who picked these teams? <laughs> <laughs> Director <laughs> Dave. Hey, give me some profile teams. Okay, OKC. They've actually overachieved this year. They've been good. I think they'll be too strong against Sacramento. But Sacramento um, have actually snuck a few games you probably wouldn't think. Yeah. OKC. OKC okay, for me, the play of Adams and Paul. OK. All right. Well, I want to get to game two. It's uh, Brooklyn Nets against Trey Young. Oh, 50. my goodness. Drops oh, 50. My. Oh, my Averaging goodness. 30. Yeah. Yeah, He's second in the league in saying, scoring. Everybody's saying it. You know, Luca, them trading for Luca was such a mistake. And he, you think he took that personally? I think he did. He looks like a little man with a chip on his shoulder. Does that look familiar? And, and also, did I look ashamed when you I know who that? he looks familiar like? <laughs> the, the second coming of a young Steph Curry. Like, he's fearless in his shot making ability. And now he's found ways to get creative and find guys after he gets in deep in, in certain he's situations. Good. He's so, good. Yeah. Uh, he's I'm impressive. going Brooklyn uh, yeah. to beat him, though, knock him off. I'm going to go with Atlanta. I don't even care. I just want to see Trey knock down some big <laughs> shots. In game three, we're going to cover his uh, Orlando Magic, uh, the dunk champion that got ripped off, oh. and then <laughs> San Antonio Spurs. What has he got to do to I'm, win a dunk contest? Yeah, I don't even care. I didn't even watch it. Yeah. Um, I'm going San Antonio. That whole NBA all-star dunk stuff. I have no interest. Uh, I'm going to go San Antonio. I think they're going to turn the corner after the All-Star break. Yeah, I'm with Shane. I'm going with the Spurs and, and making sure Popovich turns that around at the back end of the season. All right. Thanks for coming all the way from WA. And like I said, wouldn't be a playoff show without you. Slick Nick. Slick Nick, easy. Great to be here. Okay. Well, that's all the time we have. Of course, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Unibet, TCL, and News Corp Australia. And all of our viewers, thank you for watching us on The Basketball Show. We'll see you shortly. 100,000. Oh, yeah. Boom. Let's get it. This is a co-production by News Corp Australia and Closer Sports.